Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. This is the practice problem video series where basically I go over problems that I feel like cover certain math concepts very well or just problems that you would normally encounter in some form of standardized test. Now, the best way to use this video series is that every time I introduce a problem, pause the video. Try to solve the problem yourself. Once you feel like you've solved the problem, or you're kind of stuck and you just need a little extra clue, continue the video and then work through it, see if you understand it. If not, try it again. Well, let's begin. Well, for today's video, we're gonna go over this problem. What is the sum of the prime factors of 864? Now on the surface, this is a fairly simple problem. All it's asking is for us to find the prime factors of this number and then add it all together. Now, there is some complication or confusion near the end, and once we get there, I'm gonna actually talk about it. So, well, let's just begin. 864, we're gonna try to find the prime factors. Well, 864 is right here, and from our experience, we can actually break this down into eight and 108. And here, you guys can either check with the divisibility rule, or if you guys end up breaking it down in a different way, that's entirely fine. As long as we break it down correctly, the end result should still be the same. Well, we have eight and 108 right here. From eight, we can actually break it down further into four and two. Well, we know from our experience, two is a prime, so here we go. We're gonna just mark it so that we know we're done. Four can be broken down into two and two. There we go. And so we're gonna mark those guys down. So this whole side right here, we're done. Finish. Now we gotta worry about this one. Here, 108 from our experience can be broken down into nine and 12, I believe. So we have nine and 12. Well, in this case, nine can be broken down into three and three. So we have threes as primes, and that's just from our experience. And 12 can be broken down into four and three. Here, this three is a prime as well. And lastly, we have four, which we can break it down into two and two. So those are prime. Great, so we followed everything. All of them are prime factors. Good, that part is done. Now we can rewrite it to make it easier on ourselves, we have 864, and then we have uh, two times this of one, two, three, four, five, five times, so two to the fifth power times, and we have three times this of one, two, three, three times this of three times. There we go. 864 is equal to two to the fifth power times three to the third power. Well, in this case, the two and the three is our prime factors. Great. Now, what do we do next? Well, in this case, uh, there's two interpretation. That's where the confusion, that's why I said it's a confusion, complication, however you wanna say it, comes in. There's two ways I've seen this kind of problem interpreted. The first one is that they're assuming the sum of the prime factors is basically the sum of all the unique prime factors. So the unique prime factors in this case is just two and three. So you would add two and three together and you would get fives and that would be your answer. Now, the other interpretation also makes sense. I find no fault in it. Rather than assuming that they're unique prime factors, we're assuming, or we're gonna add each and every one of these individual prime factors. Well, in this case, you're gonna have two add itself uh, five times, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, two plus two plus two plus two plus two. Okay, that will give us 10 right here. And then we also have three adds itself three times, three plus three plus three, which gives us nine. And then of course we're adding it all together. So we have uh, 10 plus nine in this case equals 19. And so that is our second possible answer, right? So now we have two of them, right? This one assuming unique prime factors, this one is assuming all prime factors, we're adding them together. Now, when you encounter a problem like this, especially in a standardized test, you're sort of in luck because usually standardized tests, they will give you a multiple choice. Now in the multiple choice, unless the person who designed this problem is just a complete jerk, right? The multiple choice, the option is probably gonna have one or the other. Now, if you're working on this problem, it's a free response, you can ask the person who either designed this problem or who's administering this problem, the proctor, for example, uh, what their purpose for this problem is. Do they want the unique prime factors or do they want just addition of all prime factors? And hopefully they'll tell you. If not, then, um, well, you put both of them and then you say it could be either or and you kind of cross your finger and hope for the best. Well. Hopefully this helps, uh, and if whoever designs this problem or want to use this kind of problem as a practice, 
hopefully they are uh, more precise in their language. They can specify if they want unique prime factors or if they just want the sum of all prime factors. And then if they change the problem like that, then it would definitely be a lot more um, easy to understand.